Hey, so welcome to episode three of Japan Business Time with Rochelle Karp, Rewa edition. And uh, this week's topic is from Tsurubaso. Uh, it came through on Twitter and it was asking how to survive being in a black company if you're unlucky enough to find yourself in one. And in particular, uh, when you make a mistake at a Japanese company, how to survive that. So right. good question, good topic. Yes. Hang around. There's really two parts to this, I suppose. Uh, the first is just generally surviving black companies, perhaps realizing or identifying that you're in a black company, right. what a black company is. So maybe we start with that. Let's start with that, right. What is a black company? A black company is a company that is a abuser of employees. Right. It is a bad place to work. Yeah. It's probably a place where you have to work incredibly long hours. Yeah. You might be asked to not record your overtime hours. Yeah. And you probably have a boss who's really mean and screams at you. Yes. Uh, so basically abuses your workers' rights in general. Yes. Yes. Uh, excessive hours, uh, basically stuff which violates labor codes. Exactly, yeah. Completely not following the labor code. Yeah. Yeah, so exactly. Uh, do these companies exist in Japan? Oh, there's lots of them. <laughs> and in fact, there's some one group that has an annual list of the top ten most black companies and gives them kind of a prize. That's a shame. Then. Shames them exactly because shame works really well in Japanese culture. And and although we are we are laughing about it, and I mean we're laughing because it's ridiculous that these things exist. Um, but it's this, a problem. It's, it's a, a problem. real problem. And, and, and the uh, you know. Eskimos have a word for snow, and Japanese have a word for working to death. And, <laughs> right. <laughs> and yeah. there are companies where this happens. It happens. Well, it's a, it's a legal category of the working to death. Yeah, that, it's that, actually legal. Yeah, it, that, that the Japanese government, um, the family, the deceased can petition mm. um, and say, this. we believe this person died because of overwork, and there's a, there's a committee that looks at these things and says, yes, they did die because of overwork, and you get compensation. You know, it's yeah. a whole system yeah. that exists. Yeah. How would you end up in a black company? Why would anyone join a black company? Well, you might not have realized it until you got there. Yeah. Some black companies are, are um, you know, famous ones that sound like great places to work, yeah. right? Or it just might be the place that's, that's convenient and you, maybe you didn't realize it. Yeah. Certainly, um, you know, I used to work in IT and I've worked around IT most of my career. IT was probably notorious for being among the, you know, a high rate of black companies. Right. Well, well IT engineers in Japan are totally abused. But yeah. yes, that's, that's almost a, that's another a, topic. That's, but a whole, yes. that's a whole thing. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the restaurant and entertainment industry yes, has yes, had yeah. a lot of scandals. Exactly. Um, exactly. And, yeah. and also the, um, the, the delivery services. Delivery services. Yes. It actually uh, makes the news of all these workers who are overworked and not paid properly. Exactly. Even the Eikawa schools, not so much for working to death so much as just generally ignoring labor rules and yeah. treating people legally. Right, there's a lot of issues with that. Well, there was just one that came up where um, it was actually a mother and son and they, they sued the school and they won. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Actually, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. So, so, so it's a, but, but most people don't necessarily know their rights. Yes. Who, who aren't from Japan, right? That's right. Yeah. In that particular case, and, and, and that, that kind of segues to my next question about how, how do you know, like what are the signs that you're in a black company? Um, that case, uh, it involved, that's right, the company that had been working as temporary workers for a number of years, and then at a certain point, just before an anniversary, they were told, we're making you an independent contractor from right, that right. Exactly. And, and, and it changed the whole working environment, I mean, the whole working setup, I should say, yeah. yeah. In a way that was disadvantageous to them. That's right. And, and, Unfortunately, and one of their students was a lawyer who they pressed into service to help them. Oh, is that them. right? Yes. So that oh, was really a lucky right. stroke. Yeah. A student of the English school <laughs> who was a lawyer. labor law expert. Yes, exactly. So he helped them kindly. I guess that's the pitfall of having an English teaching business is you never know who your students are. <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, it's sort of funny. But, but, yes. but this, by the way, and bear in mind, the laws in Japan, uh, because of the problems in Japan, are very protective uh, of workers. And exactly. And particularly this thing, when you treat someone as, as a temporary employee, they have to have a chance to become a full employee. After they a certain a, number of years. I, I believe it's five. Year. It's five, five. It? I think it's five, but yes. There, there is it's a, a new law. That, and, what, and what happens is, is a lot of companies will fire all their contractors at that point. Yeah. And, 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 and not let them, them stay. As well. They'll try yeah. to do tricks, but you're not allowed to rehire them. If you pull those tricks, that's it's a trick. Yeah. So they'll either yeah, fire them completely. Right, but it's a shame because what happens is, is they have people who are very good employees and are doing a good job, and, and, but they aren't willing to make them full-time employees, so then they let them go. Right. 
So that's, a, that's, for example, a case when you're doing a job that clearly isn't a one-time or an independent contracting type arrangement and they're trying to say, accept that you'll be an independent contractor. That's that would a be sign. a bad sign, yes. Well, what do you think are some other signs that I mean, uh, might tip off that this company is perhaps not, not above board? Well, I mean, anything that just feels weird, that seems fishy, I mean, they're not asking you to not record your overtime hours would be a really big red flag. That's what right? I was going to say. Yeah. That's a, and that is really common still, asking that you submit submit hours saying that you go home at the standard hours. Be right. some, and sometimes they'll say it's because you're at, you're you're of a you're a manager, you're at a certain level of seniority or something, and you know we need you to just put in standard hours. But if they're telling you the hours to record, that certainly is one flag. Definitely a big flag. Yeah. And it's also just if there's just too much work and you're working late all the time. Yeah. You're not getting enough sleep, that would be another really big one, right? Yeah. So if you realize that you're in a black company situation or you suspect that this doesn't feel right, there must be something wrong with this. Uh, do you have any suggestions for what people can do? Well, I mean, I guess my biggest thing, suggestion would be is just get the hell out of there. <laughs> I mean, Good advice. You know, you find, find another job, find something else to do because yeah. you're probably not going to change a company like that. Yeah. And you can fight them. Yeah. And when there are there are labor lawyers you can go to. There's often labor law hotlines that are available. Yeah. But it, it's it's a long slog to, yeah. to fight things legally in Japan. And if you can just find something better and get out of there, that'd be the, my recommendation. Yeah. When I have people, um, I'm not a Japanese lawyer, and, I, and and the law I do is not labor law related. But when people come and ask me for where can they go find somebody, I like for example when they haven't been paid, uh, or they need to make those sorts of claims. Um, the standard advice that I give is um, look up the local Labor Standards Bureau. Every, every mm -hmm. local government in Japan has a labor office, and the purpose of that labor office is to audit all the local companies to make sure they're complying with this law. And those offices will often offer um, free consultations, or, uh, and they'll also direct you to affordable uh, labor law experts. Plus, uh, of course, letting them know that there's a company doing this. Just going to ask, hey, are they allowed to do this? Is this okay? And sometimes they'll tell you, oh, actually, they, they are doing this okay. Um, but other times, you know, they'll say, oh, thank you for telling us that. <laughs> um, and it's something that the Japanese government does take seriously. Um, okay. So uh, I would always say look up the local labor standards, the Rodo Kijun Kaku, mm -hmm. as a good starting place. If you go on the internet or you find someone who knows a good labor lawyer, I feel sorry for them because if you know a good labor lawyer, you've probably had problems. <laughs> All right. But uh, yeah, definitely call up your labor standards bureau if you, if you are in that situation. And certainly just get out of there if you can get out and you haven't suffered. Right, right. Yeah, I would just, if you can get out, you should, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, always, always escape would be the first thing would, I would say. Yeah. And the thing with this is that. Uh, there is a difference between uh, a black company and being a, not necessarily a black company, but you've screwed up, and all of a sudden it seems like you're in a black company. Right, right, because you're on gotten on everyone's bad side, right? Yeah, so you make so a that, mistake, or you do something where, where, you know, the way that Japanese companies tend to discipline or try to correct behavior can seem very overbearing sometimes. It can just seem overbearing, or it can just be weird because they might not tell you what's wrong. Yeah. Right? And so then you have to find out what it is that you did. Yeah. And then you have to figure out how to make amends. Yeah. Right? So, when we talk about messing up, this is the second half of the, the, the question. Mm -hmm. um, the first thing, so, so the first thing is, as you just hinted at, like, how do you even know that you're screwed up sometimes when you're right? Sometimes people are indirect about right. it. Right. People could stop talking to you. Oh, God. People could <laughs> stop giving you work. Yeah. Right? Um, people could just kind of be brusque. All of a sudden, you're not um, having anyone sitting with you at lunchtime, things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really kind of the modern version of, of the old Japanese um, Murahachibu, where they used to throw you out of the village if they didn't like what you were doing, right? And so Japanese will kind of turn a cold shoulder to people. That's true, and uh, I've experienced that in my early years as well, and I know what that's like. Uh, put the other way, other, other things that I've seen as well are the opposite extreme, going into you know, extreme coaching and uh, telling off and, and browbeating. Yes, that can happen too. Yeah. yeah, and that's more obvious, right? Right. But when that happens, it's usually more clear what the problem was. Yeah. <laughs> so in that case, it's actually that there's a positive to that. At least you know what you did wrong. There's someone screaming at you for it, right? Right. Well, what do you think this trend? So okay, you realize that you've been doing something wrong. You you read okay. the air. Okay. No. Well, then you have to do a couple of things. First, yeah. you have to figure out how to apologize. Right. And so you have to go to your boss or whoever the appropriate person is and say. I realize the error of my ways. Yeah. I've been doing this thing wrong, and I've been thinking about it and realizing that it, I need to change it. And I'm very, very sorry to have caused all this trouble. 
and um, not been you know my at my best. And this is what I'm going to do to do better. Yeah. So you have to have a sincere, you know, groveling apology and your plan of what you're going to do in the future. Right. And we talked a bit about this in the last series where we talked about Hanse. The, right. The, the That's what it is, is Hanse. Yeah, exactly. But you know where I find, even myself when I first got here, and a lot of non-Japanese struggle, uh, and perhaps there's an American tendency, although I'm a New Zealander and I have the same tendency, is when we get into a spot, there is a tendency to want to spin to either minimize or spin right, right. a positive angle on it. Oh, no, that drives Japanese crazy. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. They complain about that all the time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, but it's a natural response. Yeah. It's a natural response. So I actually just wrote about this for my next Japan Times column that's coming up soon. Oh, I can't wait. And, so, and by the way, you may already be aware, apart from these awesome books that we're also going to be talking about, and you've published a bunch of books in Japanese and in English, you also write with Japan yes, Times yes, about exactly, this stuff. Yes, exactly, yes. Um, and other newspapers as well. But yeah, so I think one area where people really, when they mess up and, and they deal with it wrong, yeah, what, what, they, what the, all from a legal culture perspective as well, there's this idea, do not admit liability. Right, right, exactly. Well, that would be the Anglo-Saxon thing. You know, I know on my, on the, on yeah. my U.S. You know, um, insurance card for my car, it says do not admit fault, right? Yes. And the Japanese approach is admit liability. You know, right. and, 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 or apologize to make it all better, yes. Yes. Well, certainly, certainly we're saying that this is entirely our fault, or you know, I recognize that the, I, you know, this was my miss and I had to do this. You know, that, that, they're looking for ownership of the issue, and that ownership goes into acknowledgement. And, and and not just I'm sorry and acknowledgement, but also demonstrating uh, as part of your own, hey, let, I'm going to fix this, and how I'm going to fix right, this. Right, that you actually have thought it through and you have a plan. And right? this is working. And not time. some vague good intentions. It has to be specific, right? And this is the other thing. Even when you give a great apology, if you don't have that plan, you're going to be asked for it, and you'll feel like, why are you still beating up on me? I apologize. Right, right, right. No, 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 yeah, but it has to be part of it, yeah. It's, it's, it's a, it's a two-part thing, and they have to go together. Yeah, and when you handle that badly, any company can feel like a bad like company. Well, this is true, <laughs> yes, this is true. <laughs> uh, so two great topics, um, and certainly uh, if you're in a black company, a company that you suspect uh, is uh, violating labor standards, um, you can just go and ask. There are places you can go and ask for free um, because they're needed. The, the labor standards bureaus are there. And uh, certainly if you're in a situation of your own creation... <laughs> Um, we just need to deal with it the right way. It is different, so ask your co-workers and mm -hmm. uh, just remember that they're looking for acknowledgement and really just a plan to not let this happen again. Right, right. Um, great advice, actually, and really good topic. So thank you for that, Tsurubaso. Um, yes. We have more topics, so come and join yes. us next week uh, for more yes. of the Rewa edition of Japan Business yes. Time. Thank you.